Welcome to the Lifestyle Overland Story. In this chapter of travels, my 11-year-old daughter Caroline and I are headed north on a very special trek to one of our most favorite places in the world, Alaska. Seven days from now, we'll be joining up with some friends in Anchorage before loading up our vehicles on a ferry to access the infamous and remote island of Kodiak. But first, we've got a little bit of driving ahead of us, so ride along. Ever since our first trip to the Arctic in 2018, we have been in love with the last frontier and have returned multiple times for more Alaskan explorations and several of the overland rentals available through Alaska Overlander, where our good friends Craig and Brooke maintain a fleet of fully kitted Toyotas for those wanting to fly up and explore this magical landscape. This time around, instead of flying up and renting a rig, we're making the long, 3,200 mile drive from Utah in Aspen, our Lexus GX460. Now, like all of our rigs, she has become a member of the family and has faithfully taken us to some incredible places over the past several years. So, when it came time to discuss selling her for a full size upgrade due to our growing family, Caroline broke down in tears at the thought of seeing her go. So earlier this year when I was driving the Dalton Highway in the dead of winter with my friend Craig, I lamented my upcoming unsavory task and he suggested another option, bring Aspen to Anchorage and add her to the Alaska Overlander rental fleet instead. That way we would have an income stream to finance the next build and could still fly in and use her from time to time. Obviously. We love this plan, so we got to work on her with some thorough maintenance items and fresh upgrades to take what was already a dialed-in build even closer to absolute perfection for her upcoming Alaskan adventures. After 437 miles from Salt Lake to a beautiful area just north of Mountain Home, Idaho, day one of our long journey was off to a decent start. And finding this lakeside camp for the night was the cherry on top. Okay. Howdy folks and welcome to... A father-daughter adventure. We are on our way. Where? Alaska. With our primary goal being Kodiak Island. And then we're going to leave this thing up there fly back so that other folks can rent her and explore Alaska too so should be a fun drive we've got three count them thousand miles to drive <laughs> and we're gonna take about six days to do it so it's about nine hours of driving a day should be should be fun it should be interesting with natural and artificial flavors watch this nice that was slick They say gardens are for growing So much more than roses But you like the way they look They say dancing is for parties But you'd rather do it always So I twirl you around the kitchen while we cook I wanna do Do anything. 
Good morning, folks. Marvelous, marvelous. I sleep last night. We're at the end of this dead end spur. No traffic to deal with. Could hear just a little bit from across the lake there, but for the most part, absolutely silent. And then we woke up to this chorus of songbirds just waking us up. Pretty spectacular first night, to be honest with you, as far as first nights go. Usually I don't sleep worth a doggone. But last night I slept pretty good, so we are going to be eating some fast meals because we got to make time on this leg of the trip. So we've got some handy dandy little cereal buckets, if you will, cereal bowls. We've got cup of noodles like you saw last night. We've got all the easy stuff to make this speedy and efficient. So uh, quick breakfast and then wheels up. Gotta roll. And of course, one of the most important ingredients topo brew. <laughs> I made you breakfast. Thank you. sleep I felt like a baby yeah it was like probably the best sleep I've had in a while yeah it's pretty peaceful out there I was really anticipating being up most of the night as I usually am the first night or two yeah I was out <laughs> out Some of the Lord's finest chicken. My pleasure indeed. Day two in the books, just in time. We were getting a little bit worried about finding camp, but this, this campground is perfect. Only one weird looking van parked on the far end down there. Otherwise, we're here by ourselves. So, if you don't hear from us, it was the brown weird van. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Look at this place.
<laughs> Already ready for bed, huh? Yes. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm kind of just ready to go to bed. Yeah. Go play some Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Today's route took us across Idaho, Oregon, and Washington, where we camped a few miles south of the border for tomorrow's crossing. Day two was productive and brought the total tally for the trip to 1,023 miles. Good morning, folks. We had another delightful evening here in this campground, of all things. I think it's free. There's no pay boxes. There's no information. So it's right on a lake. If you're ever in northern Washington, right before crossing the Canadian border, this is a good one to have in your uh, list. Had a quick breakfast, coffee, obviously. And now let's go across the Canadian border and head a little further north. How'd you sleep last night? I slept pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. How are you liking the new tent? I love it a lot. Yeah. I'm glad we're giving it away. <laughs> Maybe we'll get one on silver. Yeah. Yeah. Trying out uh, on X a little bit more today. Guy, I lost most of my weight points again, so I'm um, not really using them as much right now. So I got a new phone, reinstalled or installed Gaia on the new phone. And, you know, it's doing its sync thing, syncing, syncing, and it says it's complete. And yet, I would venture to say about 70 to 80% of my waypoints did not carry over. And when you look at the folders, they're empty. You can go online to the browser version and see some of them, not all of them. And so, man, when it comes to data storage, do not trust these apps. When you get done with the trip, get home, download that GPX file, put it in your own doggone folder because if you're trusting them, you're going to lose some really important information. To be fair, I push it hard. I have a lot of stuff. Like, I, I really, really push it hard. But I have a lot of friends who are also very much into the navigation apps who have had similar issues. I just want to give you a little bit of an update. I am still frustrated with all navigation apps that are out there and therefore I just use them all. All right, well, let's get back to Hard Road and head to Old Canada. I don't know what to say after that. <laughs> Maple syrup, <laughs> a bounty bars. Oh, I can't wait to get a bounty bar. I Candy in Canada is so much better. They use real sugar, obviously, not that corn syrup, waxy crap that we eat down here. Since cameras are frowned upon at the border crossings, we had to put them away and focus on the task at hand. Well, Caroline, after six years, you finally returned to Canada. That was a pretty easy border crossing. Probably the smoothest one yet. So something for you guys, if you do decide to do a trip with your child, without the spouse, you do have to have a notarized, ideally, consent form signed by your significant other. So we have Caroline's passport, we have her birth certificate, and we have a notarized consent form to allow her to travel. That way, if any questions ever come up, it's all taken care of. I'm so, so excited. I'm so excited for McDonald's. <laughs> Can you believe that? Uh, Let's go see. She's wanting some poutine, so. I'm sure there's better places to find poutine. But. As we walked into the first McDonald's we could find, it was as if Canada knew we had arrived and welcomed us with a fitting anthem. Caroline has become obsessed with trying new foods, which is impressive for an 11-year-old. 
So I can't say no to not giving her the chance to try a Canadian favorite to celebrate our first day here. Oh, and for those who are wondering, poutine consists of french fries, cheese curds, and brown gravy, which melts the curds, making a savory dish. Though I'm not sure if she was very impressed. Are you a fan of the poutine? Oh. All right, now you can be honest. <laughs> oh, I liked it. You liked it? Are you sure? I mean, it's McDonald's. I mean, I... I you're, not, you're not gonna hold poutine to the McDonald's version? Yes. So we're gonna have to try it again? Yes. Okay. But initial impression? Meh. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> <laughs> With thunderstorms moving in, we decided to find camp before things got too wet and dark. Our first attempt was a campground with decent reviews, but it turned out to be a bit too crowded for us to commit. And so we headed for some nearby forest roads that looked promising. As it turns out, the rain beat us here, and we were soon slipping and sliding up and down the ridges and hunt for a suitable spot. When you do this often enough, you start to get a sense for safe spots that come from visual cues or sometimes just a tingling in your spine that tells you something isn't right. Uh, I don't personally like it, but... I mean, it's got a complete rolled over burnt out car. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> if anybody's missing a vehicle, that might be theirs. Ooh, going sideways now. Well, the campground didn't work out. That just wasn't wasn't our vibe. So I'm following some hints on High Overlander. That's not really panning out either. We're on a basically on just a logging road right now, and it is sloppy mess. Not super deep, but super slick, and uh, just continue to get worse and worse. So we're just going to back out of it entirely if we can. Might even have to air down here in a second. Just to get some good traction going downhill and uh, maybe try and find a provincial park or something like that. Just bite the bullet, pay for a campground that's decent. Now for the fun part going downhill on this stuff and see how, how she does. I'm terrified. I'm bumping her. Yeah, this was a little slicker than I expected. Hopefully, there's enough crest on this trail that keeps us up on top here. Burned out stolen cars are a good sign that you should move on. And so we found something a bit further down the trail and off the beaten path. Though neither one of us were feeling great about it. I mean, this is us, babe. <laughs> Got a better vibe to it, then. No, not really. <laughs> All right, well, we found an acceptable camp. It's actually off the main trail here. Got a cool little pond covered in ducks right now. The rain's really putting a damper on our supper plans. Oh, long day yet again. Just sandwiches tonight. Had steaks planned. We got more storms moving in, so. Oh, look how dark that is. Yeah. Keep it simple. Day three of our travels took us across the border and 374 miles closer to Anchorage, netting a grand total of 1,397 miles overall. Not a great day for covering ground, but little did we know, we were about to get an early start for day four. It is currently 3.11 a.m. And we're in the car. Sorry, it's super dark because there's snow all over the car. So we're getting a few inches of snow and my dad heard trees falling down. So we're having to leave at 3.11 a.m. And I was having a, I don't know, it was like a badish sort of like dream. And he was like, okay, do we stay here or do we leave? I was like, we get the heck out of here. 
Because if you didn't know, I have a really big fear of like trees falling down. Because it's so sudden, you don't know if it's going to happen. But we're currently going to drive. So yeah, <laughs> get some gas station breakfast. So see you soon. <laughs> Around 2 a.m., I sat bolt upright when a massive tree fell about 30 yards away. As my senses came to me, I noticed the hard rain had stopped. Then I heard more trees in the distance cracking and popping like fireworks. When I unzipped the tent window, I was showered in white, cold clumps of snow. A freak late spring snowstorm was currently dumping on us, and the now sap-filled trees were buckling like toothpicks under the extra weight. I didn't even have time to film the crazy cracking sounds since we had to rush to get us out of there before we became trapped by more downed trees across the trail. And while I usually carry a chainsaw for freak events just like this, we were traveling light and that was left behind in Utah this time around. And so our day of travel was off to an exciting, very early start. we go somewhere new we are not new like whenever we go somewhere we always want to try like the different stuff that we don't have back in utah so this time we got a crunchy holy crap that's huge <laughs> that's a whole thing that's really good good and interesting oh wow it's good that is different
Yeah. Well. I got something to show you. Well, we're still a little early in the season, I guess. But I don't know if you remember from season one, that salmon glacier and that trail goes all the way up where you can overlook it and camp in some amazing places. But we're not getting around this guy. Definitely not getting around that guy back up there. Avalanche danger is still like iffy. It's in spring conditions, as they say. So it fluctuates throughout the day depending on solar radiation. And come and off in this too. Depending on solar radiation and rain, which we're getting a little bit of right now. So as far as we can go, snap a few pictures, head back down the mountain here. But ah man came all the way over here to see it at least we can see the toe and it is shrunk it is shrunk big time I don't know if you can remember season one I'll throw some clips up but gorgeous gorgeous place right here oh and by the way Starlink is working like a charm we've had internet pretty much the whole time Sarah's having a video chat with her mom it's actually Sarah's birthday today so um, yeah, sorry, babe, we weren't home for that, but I hope you enjoyed the flowers that we sent. All right, Honestly, here we go. You can just put in a plastic baggie or something. You remember it at all? Barely. Barely. All right, since camp didn't work out up the glacier, we're headed to another dispersed area. Quick little pizza here at the, uh, what's it called? Silverado Cafe Pizza Pie. Definitely the best pizza in Stewart. Crazy. This is wild. I think we found our spot. All right, girl. That was a long one. That was. That was pretty rough. But I think I think we found a campsite worth the effort. The drive into this was actually spectacular. Just Star Wars level. What is that? What is what is the uh Planet of the Ewoks. I can't remember. I'm running on an hour and a half of sleep, so Tatooine, I believe, is the name. But we were too tired to film it, so maybe, maybe if we're lucky, we'll go out that way in the morning. <sighs> Bedtime.
day four ticked off a hefty 593 miles through British Columbia thanks to our early start and late finish, pushing our total to 1,990 beautiful but exhausting miles. All right, folks. Well, let's see. What was that, about 20 hours later? We're in bed, finally. It's a lot of work driving all the way to Alaska. We still have two more minimum 12 hour days this is day four Whew, some work if you're going to do this you want to take at least a couple weeks spread it out see some things this is a blistering pace all right get some sleep see you in the morning we had covered a lot of ground in these four days and made quite a few core memories along the way but tonight we're turning off our alarms to hopefully catch some extra sleep before driving the next 1,000 miles to Anchorage, where, funny enough, our adventure would really get started. Thanks for riding along with me and Caroline on this father-daughter trip of a lifetime. Tune in next week for part two as we make our way deeper into the North Country. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in renting Aspen up in Alaska, head to explore.rent for more details. <laughs>